What is up fellow bushcrafters? Guess what today is? Question and answer Wednesday. Roll that intro. <laughs> I would like to start out by saying thank you to everybody who keeps asking questions. This is by far my favorite day of the week. As soon as I post this video and the comments start coming through with more questions, I get so excited I wanna go and film it again, but I know I need to wait. So it's helping me practice self-control and I'm also just loving it overall. Thank you. This week we really have a lot of questions. I'm going to also apologize to people in the first three Q&A that asked questions if I skipped. I was trying to keep a running list going and then I lost the running list. But that's okay, I figure that you can come back and ask some more questions. If you do ask questions below, which I really encourage you to do, I'm not gonna answer them. I'll answer them next question and answer. If you already asked them and it's on one of these sheets. We're not gonna get through every question today, so we'll just keep it for next week. We'll just keep it going. Also, after the last question and answer, Bigfoot seemed to be a very predominant theme in all of the comments. I would just like to clear the airway and say Bigfoot is not a real thing. I know that people wanna say that scientists say it is and that somebody saw a picture their brother's, sister's, uncle's friend took. It's just not real. I spend hundreds of hours in the woods a year. I would have seen something from tracks to sign. I've just never seen anything. So it's just, it's not real guys, it's not real. Let's get started. I just watched an episode of Alone where you and the other guy finished where you required to stay in a certain distance from where you were dropped off and if you could have roved over a large area, do you think the time would have been easier? Yes, you are in a very confined area and do I think if I would move it would be easier? Yes, but you can never say that 100% because you just don't know what would ever happen. If anybody knows anything about hunting or fishing, there's just some areas and locations that deer don't travel and game aren't in or fish just don't bite. That's why we move around, we have our favorite hunting spot or favorite fishing spot. So that can make a huge difference. Psychologically, it would have been a huge advantage to constantly keep getting fish. So yes, it would have made a big difference. Have you ever made a knife out of stainless steel? No. What music do you listen to? I listen to all types of music. What I can say is this. I normally, if I'm just driving around, I just have the radio on. So whatever the newest type of pop music is, I guess you would call it. I do like country music, but more the rock style, like Florida Georgia line kind of stuff. When I'm running or lifting, I like some old school rap. I think just growing up in the 90s. That was a big thing. So I like my old school rap also. And when I'm working at my shop, a lot of times I'll have Pandora on and my two playlists that I listen to all the time on Pandora are Smashing Pumpkins Radio and Bush Radio. What are your opinions on titanium canteens as cook gear? I think titanium is fine. I know people will say that putting titanium in and out of a fire will warp it and ultimately destroy it. I've never had that experience. I have some titanium cups that I use pretty consistently. Some of my friends have the titanium canteens. They all seem to work out fine. The only downfall is the price for me. They're just very expensive. So that's a little bit of a hold off, but otherwise great piece of kit. Dan, what would you say are the top five most useful and used knots that you were tying with bushcrafting. Bowling knot, slip knot, square knot, straight lash. Does lashings count as a knot? I'm gonna put it in that category, diagonal lash. That's what I use the majority of the time right off the top of my head. Dan, do you prefer to guy line a plow point shelter or not? Personally, I don't see the need. What this individual is talking about is when we think about a plow point up against a tree, do you just tie that off or do you need to set an entire guy line across from one end to another to two trees? Um, I personally don't think you need to set that entire ridge line or guy line, whatever you want to call it, up, I, there's really not a need for that. You can just tie it off to one point on a tree. I mean, there is a time maybe to put that up, but is it needed? No. Do you have any tips on preparing fresh kills? I mean, skinning, butchering, flaying. Yes, I do that all myself. That's a great idea for an upcoming video. What's the scariest thing that happened to you in the woods? 
I don't want to talk about it. I never really had any scary situations in the woods, probably the worst, but then now when I look back on it, best time out in the woods was I went on a beaver trapping trip with my brother-in-law and one of my friends, Dan, and while we were out there, we got in this real sticky situation. All the rivers and streams that were around us, basically creating a triangle, started to flood and we were somewhat trapped. We ended up making our way out, but it was at that point that it was very sketchy situation. So that was quite frustrating at the time. Looking back on it, it was a hilarious trip and we all laugh about it constantly now. Not sure if you'll answer this as it's fairly personal. However, I'm newer to the area and looking for a good place to do campouts and practice bushcraft skills. I live in Pottsville, work in Ringtown. Appalachian Bushman School is located in Ringtown. You could check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Ton of classes, one day seminars. All kidding aside, I do know that that does require financially some money that you have to put out and it might only be a weekend here or there, but I would highly recommend that because it's giving you a huge jump start on getting out and doing this stuff. Plus you get to meet all of us and if we really like you, maybe we'll hang out with you. Secondly though, before I had my school property, I just would talk with a lot of people who own property and see if they would let me use a small portion of it. If that never worked, what I was go out on state game lands or in state forests. Unfortunately, there you can't cut trees and you shouldn't have fires, but you gotta do what you gotta do. That's not a recommendation to go out and start fires and cut down trees in any public land. All that I'm saying is public land's a great place to go out, explore, maybe make a bird's nest and blow it to flame and put it right out immediately, that kind of thing. You can get a lot done in public land. I do 18th century living history and you used to do some videos on a subject. Do you still do any 18th century stuff? Love your channel. Why would you think I don't do that? I don't know. All kidding aside, yes, I do. I don't do many videos in it, although I practice a lot of skills from that time frame. I have a very big project coming up with another company that I don't want to tell you more about the project. It's going to be awesome. That's coming up at the end of the month, so I really should get back into character. But I do practice a lot of these skills while I'm out. I'm just in more modern clothes. Tool-wise, you know, I'm still using flint and steel and all that stuff that they would have used. So yes, I do. I only usually do one or two reenactments a year, though. It's just a good time. Drink some beer, hang out with some friends. It's fun. What is the most rewarding slash satisfying thing in your life doing what you do? I'm assuming this is in a context of being a survival wilderness living instructor. It's when that light bulb goes on and somebody puts that smile on their face because they just learned something new or they just enjoy themselves while being out here. At the end of a class when everybody is just pumped up and excited and they're just they want to get back out there and they want to get home and share it with people, that is super fulfilling. It's my favorite part of this job. Why do you not really carry a pocket knife? I've never seen you with one or maybe I just missed it. I do always carry a pocket knife. I have it in my pocket the majority of the time. If it's not my pocket, it's in my belt pouch. I think that a pocket knife is a great tool. If you can use an ax and you have this, you really don't need much else. I know that makes everybody who loves their belt knife just cringe, but this for fine carving and whittling and just camp chores, along with the ax for the larger stuff is a win-win situation. I love pocket knives. I just use knives that are fixed blade much more on camera because the majority of people are gonna either come to classes or go out, they're gonna have a fixed blade knife that they use primarily in the woods. Good stuff, but you do need to have your wife help you dress. Your collar turned up is a little distracting. Maybe a mirror would help. Cool kids pop their collars, that's why. <laughs> Can you mix different medicinals together in one tea, say turkey tail, chaga, honey, cinnamon? Absolutely. That's actually a great combo. Dan, as always, great content. Was just up around your area-ish, area-ish, in Pottsville, and of course had to go to Cabela since I was close. Two questions. Have you ever considered talking to Cabela's as a sponsor, see if they would sell your merchandise? I do a lot of work with Cabela's not on a national level, but at the Harrisburg store, I'm like their go-to survival expert. I do a lot of seminars, demonstrations, and I work with them on a lot of different projects. So, yes. Have you been on a portion of the AT, also known as the Appalachian Trail, 
through poor Clinton, just looking for info from experience compared to reading what others say online. Yes, I have. I actually hiked when I was in the endurance training. I got dropped off at Delaware Water Gap, which is on the Pennsylvania, New York border of the Appalachian Trail and hiked south down to the Blue Mountain and then from Route 183 up through Port Clinton to the Blue Mountain. So they, that was two days. I did one one day and the other one the other day. It was close to 80 some miles. It was brutal. Um, what I can say is that if you're gonna be around Port Clinton, hike Pinnacle, that is a little offshoot of the Appalachian Trail. Beautiful overlook on the trail. It's definitely something I would highly recommend. What is the air speed velocity of an unladen swallow? 24 miles an hour, who does not know that? Actually, what the hell does that even mean? What? Do you take active notice on the weather to make a weather forecast on the trail or in a base camp during your time out? If so, do you use a thermometer, air pressure device like on a GPS, smartwatch, wind reader, wet finger up in the air. I always am looking at the weather. What I do use a lot is my phone. I'll use the weather app just to see the upcoming forecast and then an app called My Radar that I can actually track real time. I feel like I'm a better meteorologist than the majority of people on TV with that app. What do you consider to be your best, most developed skill? Definitely axemanship. Did you say Delaware? Everybody forgets about Delaware. Is that even big enough to be a state? Just kidding, Delaware. Shout out to Delaware State. Can you talk about the storage of all your outdoor gear, specifically axe storage? I'm up to close to double digits on axes. Welcome to the club. I'll actually do a video on where I store all my gear. I call it the trapping house. It's pretty amazing. It's literally an entire house that is just packed with gear. It's, it's ridiculous. What do you treat your oil skin with? I've never treated any of my oil skin. I've never had a tarp leak or a haversack just leak through that was oil skin. So I don't, I, I don't have a good clear answer for that. How much water should I carry on a three day trip in 80 degree weather, gets down to 30 or 40s at night? My recommendation for water is always this, pre-plan if you can to see if there's an, a water source so you can boil water. A gallon a day is a very safe bet, but if you're hiking in an area, carrying three gallons of water, is th that's gonna be somewhat of a nightmare. So one gallon of water, preferably, use that sparingly as needed. Once you're at camp, use a local water source, disinfect your water and you'll have more water. And that will wrap up the question and answer for this week. We still have questions left that we're not gonna get to, so these will actually get put inside the yurt and then I'll be able to catch up next week where we left off and then from there, add on the new question. So it's gonna be a good time. So again, everybody, thank you for joining in. Thank you for commenting below. If you haven't already, leave a question below so it doesn't get answered until the next question and answer. This was Dan Wolak with Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Thanks for joining this video. Thanks for questioning below. Thanks for just watching this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check us out over at coldcrackerbushcraft.com and until next video, stay in the woods, guys.